Yo guys, what is up? Maxi here in our Outriders video, and today we're going over my Anomaly Power Devastator build. Now, I have been playing this build up to Apocalypse 30 with zero issues, never die, absurd damage, and I've been playing a lot with my um, Technomancer friend and my Pyromancer friend, and they're five gear levels higher than me, and we're still out damaging them with this setup. It's absurd. I hope you guys enjoy the breakdown. This might be a little bit of a longer video because I've got so much information that I want to share with you. Let's get right into it. Before we get into the gear and the weapons, we need to talk about what's making this do so much damage. And a big part of that is our pack street. Now, upheaval used to be the shining star of the Devastator in early access in the closed beta. This was one of the most busted skills ever. It's been significantly nerfed. It's still extremely strong, but I believe to be the new shining star is multi-strike. 30% of damage dealt by seismic skills is stored and added to your next seismic skill. This effect resets every time you release your stored enemy. Your, sorry, your stored damage. Now, we have three earthquakes. We are an earthquake build. We are not using impale. And our goal is to hit as hard as we possibly can with our first earthquake, which is going to feed into our second one, which is going to feed into our third one. And we're on a four second cooldown on earthquake. And my earthquakes are hitting 35 million damage. Uh, they go from like 4 million to 10 million to 20 million. Um, I've seen them get up on like certain captains if I have them debuffed to like 35 million damage, which is an absurd output. And we're covering a ginormous amount of area with our earthquake. So not only is our clear speed really good, but our single target damage is really good uh, when we get our single target set up going, which I'll explain in a second. But just note that with our pack tree, we are able to pump out some absurd damage next up earthen shell this skill if you're struggling on devastator once you get this you will literally never die this converts the damage that you deal with skills to shield but it considers all damage so any damage on your initial hit any damage afterwards for example if you bleed with your earthquake your passive bleeds are just going to be constantly generating shields. You're going to be bleeding everything on the map. You have basically unlimited sustain. I have not died on my Anomaly Devastator since starting into the Trials of, of uh, Tari Gritar, and I'm now Apocalypse 30. The sustain on this setup is absurd, and we're going to be pumping more damage to convert more of that damage into shields. Next up, we're going to get into our gear. Now, the biggest thing you need to understand when I show you my gear is... Your Apocalypse Tier 3 mods are going to be random. It's going to be very hard for you to replicate the exact gun that I have or the exact chest piece that I have. But what I'm showing you my gear for is so that you can get a general consensus of what mods are good and you can fill in the gaps on your own build. To start us off, I am using the Seismic Commander set. This is going to give me a 50% damage increase towards bleeding enemies. And in our PAX skill tree, all of my or my skills, my earthquakes are going to deal bleed damage. And that multiplier is going to work for both upheaval and multi-strike. Remember, this is 30% of the damage dealt by seismic skills is stored. If I'm going to do more damage, I'm going to get more damage stored. Same with upheaval. The more damage that I output, uh, that reapplying of damage, which upheaval double dips in all of our damage multipliers. So it's going to do 50% more damage on the way in and then 50% more damage on the way out as long as the target is still bleeding. That is a ginormous multiplier for us. And we're going to be grabbing a lot more multipliers, uh, which I'll explain in a second. But starting from the top, I've got my helmet with anomaly power, status power, and cooldown. Or I don't have cooldown on this, but you're going to want to prioritize anomaly power, status power, and cooldown on your pieces of gear. Um, I've got Thunder's Legacy, which is just a really ridiculous AoE damage that's going to be pulsate, pulsing from us and do a ton of thunder damage. I've got Euthanizer on this. Now, I'm going to, I have a few status mods such as like freezing boost and euthanizer this is only for like captains or bosses because i've got this absolute zero that i will pop real quick i shoot once i'm gonna get ultimate freezing bullets ultimate toxic bullets and i get omen on it which is going to give me a multiplier of 10 percent on enemies plus it procs a bleed dot so if i shoot this thing once i've got bleed i've got freeze and i've got cryo and then i've got all these multipliers for increased damage against toxic enemies increased damage against frozen enemies increased damage against bleeding enemies and that's going to absolutely scale my damage to crazy amounts um one of the other mods that i'm using now that i wasn't using prior uh to the launch of this game is arms and anomaly this is absurd damage critical shots increase your anomaly power by 253,000. that is like a third of my anomaly power in a single mod 
this is kind of a must-have mod now it's crazy um huge anomaly gains as well as captain hunter and earth legacy you want your earthquake to be hitting as many enemies as possible next up on the leg pieces i've got tainted blood increase the damage dealt to enemies afflicted by bleed by 16 percent. everything's gonna be bleeding ground crush you're gonna deal more damage with your earthquake and freeze boost more damage to frozen enemies next up my gloves and my boots are where like this build isn't min max uh, i've got the banner lord's gauntlets which have max health skill life leech and status power note i do not have cooldown on this which is fine there is a cooldown cap in this game, and the higher your Apocalypse tier goes up, the easier it is to reach cooldown cap because you, the cooldown on your pieces of gear is going to increase. Uh, for example, these pants have 15.6% cooldown on it. So you're able to hit cooldown cap uh, pretty quickly, uh, which is why I'm still at max cooldown. Max cooldown for Earthquake is 4.3 seconds. You can see it there. You cannot go any lower this. You're going to really want 4.3 seconds on your Earthquake. If you're making this build, prioritize getting 4.3 seconds on your Earthquake. Uh, on my gloves, I've got Despair, Bloody Boost, and Power Assimilation. Power Assimilation is going to give me 89,000 Anomaly Power per Elite present. Blood Boost is going to give me more damage to Bleeding Enemies. And Despair is a ginormous new multiplier. It is double damage. Enemies will receive two times more Anomaly damage. So you have to think, I've got double Anomaly damage. I've got increased against Bleeding. I've got increased against Cryo. I've got increased against Toxic. I've got increased against Captains. I've got 50% more damage to Bleeding Enemies. I shoot this absolute zero, and I'm going to be spamming my Earthquake. Um... And then lastly, I've got Cannonball Boots on with extra quake, extra quake to do my Earthquake one more time. Phantom Dash, not a necessary mod. I'm going to be honest. I just like this mod. I think it's fun. Um, I enjoy using it. It's not the most optimal thing. I'd prefer to have another like anomaly increase here uh, instead of Phantom Dash, but it's fine for what it is until I get more min-max gear. And then I got Second Quake again, uh, which is going to allow, give me three Earthquakes. For the weapons for this build, it's really not super specific. I want to give you guys a general idea of what mods work really well so that you can fit them into your own weapons. As I already already shown you, my absolute zero with ultimate freezing bullets, ultimate toxic bullets, and omen gives me a ginormous debuff on enemies super quickly, um, and it's really, really nice. Um, however, for example, if you don't have an absolute zero, you could use a deathscape. A deathscape is a new AR. It's got stigmatized that it shots inflict toxic. I've got ultimate freezing bullets and I've got fortress on it. This is also an awesome, awesome option for like a debuff weapon. The main thing is just kind of get some status effects that you can proc on an enemy real quick on your secondary weapon so that you can get those big damage multipliers. And then for your main weapon, there's a few different options. Now, for my main weapon, the weapon that I'm going to be holding while I'm doing all my earthquake, there's two options that I like that are very different and they offer different pros and cons. So. The first kind of option that I like is a weapon that has three tier three mods on it that are going to be all on shots. You don't want to have to worry about hitting critical hits when you're Devastator. You just want to be able to shoot your weapon, hip fire at whatever, and proc a ton of damage. The reason that this is super important is because upheaval in our PAX tree, like... 10% of our damage that we deal after we activate an seismic skill is going to get redone and reapply all those damage multipliers. So we only have two seconds. You want mods that activate really quickly. You hit an enemy with an earthquake. You hit them with a single bullet from the here. You're going to get storm whip, claymore torrent, and a twister. And then that's all going to get double dipping scaling, which means that these mods are going to hit really hard and then get hit really hard again. So that's like a really nice clear for like when your skills are on cooldown or to shoot an enemy real quick after you hit them with an earthquake. The other option that I like, um, and this is going to be for more earthquake damage if you're really trying to pump up your earthquake damage but have a little bit more downtime in between, is a weapon with Fortress and Mage's Arm or Mage's Rage. Fortress is going to give you 20% damage increase, which works for your abilities. So you're going to get 20% more damage on your abilities. This is enormous, and ideally, I think the god roll would be like a Thunderbird. Uh, with instead of slashing twister here fortress, which would be really nice I don't have that role yet. Um, so until then I'm using fortress and mages rage on a voodoo matchmaker Don't worry about ultimate damage link. It's really not doing much for us here The main thing is fortress plus mages rage mages rage is gonna give me 10% anomaly power whenever I hit a critical hit stacks up to four times with a fi with 15 seconds This is what helps me get above 3 million anomaly power a few shots with this thing and I'll hit 3 million anomaly power which is going to juice up the damage of my earthquakes which is really nice so you've got like a little bit more ad clear and a little bit more of like that instant damage after you do an earthquake versus more damage for all of your earthquakes both are nice um while you're leveling it's going to be really nice to have just a weapon that'll substitute some damage for you 
on when if your cooldowns aren't super great yet but when you get a little bit further i think more people are going to be gravitating towards the fortress mages rage setup if that was a little bit confusing to follow along, showing on screen right now is an image of all of my gear and all of the mod slots that I'm currently wearing. Note once again that this is not perfectly optimized. I am needing to make improvements, but I wanted to give you a general consensus on what you should be using for an anomaly devastator. Lastly, for our skills and my skill tree, I'm using Earthquake, Reflect Bullets, and Gravity Leap. Now, Earthquake is our number one damage source, 4.3 second cooldown, giant AoE. My base is right now 927,000. That's before all of my damage multipliers applied. Reflect Bullets, I'm using uh, for a certain node that I'll explain in a second. And then Gravity Leap, I'm using purely for the Despair mod, which is going to double my anomaly damage for five seconds. And everything we're doing is anomaly damage. Um, in our skill tree, if we take a look here, the reason I'm using Reflect is because it's going to activate Paladin. Using protection skills increase your anomaly power by 45% for 10 seconds. The reason I'm using Reflect is because you can activate it and deactivate it and it refunds the cooldown, but it still procs Paladin. This is going to boost your anomaly power whenever you want with zero cooldown for by 45%. That is a huge damage increase. And by not using Golem, uh, I can use it whenever. Golem is nice for survivability, but once again, I literally haven't died on this character because the pack strafe with shield generation is crazy. Um, I'm not going to go through every single node here, but we're basically just grabbing cooldowns where we need it. Anomaly power, damage against enemies, bleed, bleed healing. Uh, skilled sentry used to be bugged. This would basically make you unkillable. They made it so it didn't stack infinitely. So you're going to want to grab the blood donation healing, uh, in my opinion. It's just really nice to pick up for more survivability. And that uh, blood donation healing is also, or all the bleeding is also going to change into shields. And then our capstone is going to increase our skill damage of our seismic skills by 50%. This is a really, really nice pickup. Um, skill tree, sign up, self explanatory. And lastly, we've got the ascension. Um, you're going to want to go for anomaly power, resistance piercing, status power, and anomaly damage increases, as well as cooldown and damage against elites. I would prioritize going cooldown reduction first. Your first 10 points should be into cooldown reduction. Get that 4.3 earthquake, and then focus on your anomaly damage and your power against elites. And lastly, I want to talk about our damage rotation. Now, the order that you use skills is very important. The order that you shoot your weapons is very important. You have very small windows and you need to be efficient to optimize your damage. And think of this kind of as like a fighting game where you want to use this ability and then this ability and then this ability. You kind of have a combo. And once you get some more practice with the build and the character, you're going to get that damage rotation down pat. Now, my damage rotation that I like to do uh, currently and it's changed uh, for iteration to iteration, but I'm mainly gonna be talking about the bosses in this. You're gonna want to pop, your very first thing is your reflect. Uh, that's gonna give you that big 45% for 10 seconds. As soon as you pop reflect, you're going to want to use your sub-zero to proc your status effects and your omen for more damage increase. After you do that, ideally you swap to your other weapon where you're going to proc fortress and mage's rage getting those quick critical hits after you proc those then you're going to dive onto an enemy to proc despair this is your big damage trigger you've now done all your prep work by despairing by procing reflect using both weapons you're ready to go and then you're going to let it rip with your um earthquakes your three earthquakes do them as fast as possible and then as soon as you're done you're going to want to shoot that enemy in the head uh just to make sure that all of your buffs are up uh really like I, I, that's kind of part of the reason I like having like a damage mod is so that you can pop a little bit of extra damage at the very end of your rotation to be factored into upheaval. Um, you could put a big damage mod on your pistol. I don't really have a big damage mod on your pistol, but that's basically the rotation. Um, and yeah, keeping that up and doing that over and over again is going to optimize your damage. Guys, that is going to do it for this video. A lot of effort went into making this build and a lot of testing. And if you appreciate the effort that went into this, a like helps me out a lot and may maybe even subscribing uh if you guys want more tips on devastator or getting to the higher apocalypse difficulties or gear farms i'm always live on twitch.tv moxie guys that is it for the video i will catch you on the next one take care guys peace